Shall we bow our heads in a word of prayer? Father, again we come in the precious name of Jesus, asking for a new anointing from heaven and for divine illumination upon the word. Speak to our hearts once again, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have your Bibles, I want us to turn to the Gospel of St. Mark, the fourth chapter, and begin reading with the 23rd verse. St. Mark's Gospel, chapter 4, starting with verse 23. Jesus is speaking. He said, If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. And he said unto them, Take heed what ye hear. With what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you, and unto you that hear shall more be given. For he that hath to him shall be given, and he that hath not from him shall be taken away even that which he hath. He's talking about hearing. It's possible to lose what you've got. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his precious word. As Jesus said here, take heed what ye hear. I take it from that 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 means that I have some responsibility as to what I hear. Otherwise, how could I take heed if I, I say, well, I can't help what I hear. According to this, we can. Now, I, I didn't write this. I'm just trying to preach it so that I can choose what to hear and what not to hear. Now, what I hear affects my life, and so this is a great responsibility placed upon me as to what I hear, because what I hear is going to affect my life. Now, the ear is a marvelous gift from God. I, I marvel at this. Uh, to think that with the ear we have sounds, voices, and music. What a blessing to hear music. And uh, all the, the things that we can hear with our ears, it's a marvelous gift from God. Sermons, or we can hear evil things, but the ear, the ear can be trained to tune out what you don't want to hear. I remember years ago as a boy, the first time we got a radio, uh, some of you, if any of you <laughs> remember that far back, a battery radio. We brought in like automobile batteries and uh, we charged them up at night. And what a marvelous of things it was, those little knobs we could turn and tune in to get a station or you could tune it out. Now the same thing is true today. But today we can sit in a chair and with remote control, we just press a button and if we don't like something, we tune it out. So God says, take heed what you hear. We are living in a day of selectivity because there are so many voices clamoring for our, our hearing. And you are going to have to learn to tune out what you don't want to hear. I think it was Elizabeth Barrett Browning who wrote in the mid-19th century in England when so many young children were being really put into slavery, into factories and mines, and were dying. And she wrote that statement, Do you hear the children weeping, oh, my brothers? One of her statements. And someone wrote, Many did not hear. All they could hear was the clink of a coin on a counter. That's all that they had tuned out the voices of the children. Completely tuned them out. They didn't hear them. Now, the body has a great ability to adjust to sights and sounds and smells, and we can tune out what we don't like. Even smelling. Do you know that your body has the ability to tune out bad smells? I, I went through the Dow chemical plant in uh, Michigan some years back. We came into where they made peppermint, strong odor peppermint, and the guy taking us through said, now the men that work in here can't smell this. 
They don't smell it. He said they smell it only twice a year when they come back from vacation. And I think uh, after, a vac- after a Christmas vacation, that's, that's the only time they can smell They can't turn. Why? The body has the ability to tune out anything it doesn't like. They can tune out, the body can tune out bad smells as well. That's why people living in slum areas and in, in, in stinking places, uh, the body can tune out that, sm- that smell and just completely turn it out. I remember when we bought our home, they had a, there was a pet odor in that that was so strong that we had to take up the carpets, we had to even take up some of the flooring and put down new flooring and new carpets to get rid of And you wonder, why in the world could the people that lived there stand it? They didn't smell it. You can go into somebody's home and if they've got a pet that's dirty or filthy or something of that kind and they don't keep it clean, uh, you can smell it, but the people that live there, they don't smell it. They've tuned it out. So, and it's a wonderful gift because if a person is forced to live in a filthy place, you, you have the ability to turn it out. You won't smell it. Isn't that one? That's a marvelous gift from God. That we can do such a thing. We can tune it out. The same thing is true of sounds. If it's a sound you don't like, you can tune it out. Uh, for instance, an alarm cock. You set an alarm cock, and if you start sleeping through a few mornings, your body automatically will tune it out. You won't hear it anymore. Now, I remember as a boy, we lived near a railroad track, and about midnight a train would come through right near a crossing and blow a whistle and the cows would shake, but we never heard it. But any strangers that would come in, it would wake them up, but I, we, we tuned it out. That sound, that, that uh, tremendous rain, the house shaking and the whistle blowing, we had completely tuned it out. We didn't ever hear a thing. Why? The body rejected it and didn't like it, it tuned it out. That's amazing that our body can tune such a thing out. I, I was thinking along with it the same thing. It was a young fellow in, uh, when I was in school together. It, was, uh, it happened to be Sandy Patty's grandfather. And uh, he was telling me, he grew up in Oklahoma, and he was telling me of being out there in Oklahoma one time as a boy, and uh, some other young fellows in the East came to visit him. They lived right by a railroad track. I think his father worked on the railroads. They had one of these railroad homes right by the railroad track. And that train, he said, would come through there. I believe it was at night again, if I remember the story correctly. And it, it would sound like that train was coming right through the living room. And he said, this boy came to the East, and they had Indians out there in that country still at that time. And, of course, they were peaceful Indians and that, but still he had heard wild stories about Indians. And the first night he was there, that train came through. He said, this young fellow jumped up and started running, yelling, the Indians are coming, the Indians are coming. They didn't hear it anymore. But the boy was so scared, he jumped and ran. But his body tuned out. Now, we do the same thing. We tune out what we do not want to hear, what we don't want, we tune it out. Now, I want you to know something. The gospel is exactly the same way. You tune out what you don't want to hear. That's why Jesus said, take heed what you hear. Because if you receive it, if you hear it, then you'll get more. But therefore, a lot of times the people who hear the gospel for the first time are those who are the most excited about it. Uh, It's the people who have heard it for many, many years. It's awfully hard to get people excited who've heard the gospel for a long time. Come on now, why don't you stick with me. It's very hard to, 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 to speak to an audience that's heard the gospel for a long time because the body has learned to tune out what they don't like. But a person who's heard it for the first time, that's why Brother Reimer, who was here, this dear man of God, I think he got saved the very first time he heard the gospel, if I remember correctly. Uh, I think it was even before he went into a meeting, was talking to some of the young, young fellows, if I remember correctly. What, what is this you're talking about? And they explained to me, he immediately gave his heart to God. He, he was, it was the first time he heard it, and he heard it and responded to it. And, uh, but the people who have heard the gospel, so that's why the longer a person sits under the sound of the gospel, the harder it is to respond because the less they hear. You see, the body has tuned in out. And people think, oh, well, I'll get right with God later on. You want to be careful. You may never hear his voice later on. It isn't that he doesn't speak, but you won't hear. 
So God have mercy on the person who thinks, well, I'll get later saved later on when I get done sowing my wild oats. You may never hear his voice. It isn't that God won't speak, but you won't hear him anymore because the body automatically tunes it out. And that's why some people, you can't speak to them because they've already tuned him out. In verse 25, Jesus goes on to say, if you have been hearing and responding, more will be given to you. With what the measure you meet here, it sounds like he's talking about money or something else, but he's talking about hearing. And he that hath to him shall be given. That is, if a man has been hearing, if you've been hearing, God's going to give you some more. Let me give you an illustration. If you've been listening to sermons that go forth, if you've been listening and hearing and responding, God will give you more when you get away. And people have come and told me, said, why, after your sermon, uh, God showed me this, or scripture came to me, and they've heard truth that I didn't say, but God gave it to them. So God says, I'll give you more. Now, to some that hath shall be given more. And if you don't listen, then he says you'll lose. If you don't lose, what does it say here? And to him that hath not from him shall be taken away even that which he hath. Even truth that you have once learned, you'll lose it if you quit hearing. Now, uh, these are marvelous truths. I want you to know God said these truths. He knows how he's made us. He's made us this way, and he's telling us. Therefore, he says, you take heed what you hear. You better take heed to what you hear. If you will, you'll get more. If you don't, you'll lose what you have. Some Bible says here, so the voice of God often comes in a still, small voice, as it did to Elijah up on Mount Carmel. The Bible says, be still. And know that I am God. In Isaiah 30, 15, in quietness and confidence or trust shall thy strength be. Hard to get quiet nowadays. There's so many voices clamoring for our attention. But our ears must be trained to hear God. You, if you want anything from God, people want God to speak to them. Then I want to tell you something. If you're here this morning, you want God to speak to you, you're going to have to train your ear to hear his voice. You just go around and say, I wish God would speak to me. He'll never speak to you because you've tuned him out. And he'll only speak to you when you train your voice to hear him. I hope you get a hold of this. There's so many people, why doesn't God speak to me? I'm telling you why he doesn't speak to you. <laughs> you hear me? <laughs> I'm telling you why he doesn't speak to you. You're going to have to train your voice to hear his voice or your body will tune him out. And you'll never know it. You'll go around and say, well, God never speaks to me. And you'll never know why, because you've turned him out. God speaks to everyone. There's not a one he won't speak to. But you're going to have to train your voice or your mind, your body to hear him or you'll miss everything God has to say to you. But there's some people say, well, I wish they want God to knock him down like they did Paul on the Damascus Road. I want you to tell you the very few people does God ever do that to. Very few. Now, I know there are many hindrances to hearing. There can be satanic hindrances. That's why it's necessary that prayer be made before these services ever take place. Or the devil, it says, can snatch up the seed. So that there is satanic interference, so that you can't hear. And uh, it will take prayer to overcome that. Also, the cares of life. And Jesus warned about those. Isn't that something? The cares of life can steal away your hearing. Your job, your problems, your trials, business, so that you can't hear. Jesus warned against the cares of life, bogging you down. What is it? It's all cutting out so that you tune out God and you get occupied. You have chosen to listen to the problems of life and the situations of life. You have chosen to listen to these and you have tuned out God. God wants to help everybody. But so we sit in the driver's seat. We sit at the controls and tune in and out what we want to hear. If we want to tune in God, then we've got to give the attention to tune him in or to tune out 
problems or trials or difficulties, but they can be so tuned in that we've tuned God out. Take heed what you hear. It's your responsibility to do the tuning. Sometimes physical weakness can also be a hindrance. So we need to keep reminding ourselves to tune God in. Uh, we need, to, when, when we get in situations like problems and difficulties and trials, what do we do? Then the only thing in the world to do is to tune in the Word of God and keep reminding ourselves of what God said. Tune in on it. For instance, God said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. If you're in a hard spot, then tune in on it. God said, I'll never leave thee. The devil said, God's forgotten you. Tune it out. Tune in on God said, I will never leave thee or forsake thee. You tune in on it and you'll hear it. All things work together for good to them that love God. If you're in a bad situation, tune in on it. God said I, all things work together. I don't know this situation I'm in, but God said it would work for good. Tune in on it. Don't tune it out, but tune in on it. I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. If these scriptures are tuned out, then we'll lose the benefit of them. All things work together for good. If you tune that out, it won't, it won't work together for good. Don't tune it out. You're the one that sits at the controls. I think of James Stewart, that great saint of God that walked up and down the Iron Curtain preaching the gospel, a marvelous saint of God. His brother, I forget his name, was captured by the communists as they went up and down the Iron Curtain preaching the gospel. Hey, if you've never read about Jimmy Stewart, he's very interesting. You ought to get a hold of him. Sometimes they go to ball game or no, horse races. Think, what's a Christian doing there? Well, between the races, they'd stand up in the crowd and preach the gospel to them. Because <laughs> and they had a captive audience. The people weren't going to leave. They paid to get in there. But they, didn't like what, they didn't like what they heard, but uh, these, they were this kind of boys. And they'd go up and down the Iron Curtain preaching the gospel. Anyway, David got captured by the communists, was taken in, I think, for five years. And he was under so perplexed and so disturbed. Well, the situation that he was in, he lost his peace and he said unto God, he said, now God, he said, your word says you'll keep him in perfect peace. His mind is stayed on thee. And he said, I don't have peace in this place. And when I get out of here, I can't preach the gospel anymore. These problems, this situation, this prison has gotten to me and I, I can't preach it anymore because unless it happened to me, I can't preach it. And God said, look at the, well, remind him to look at the word. He said, I will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. And he said, God said, you haven't kept your mind on me. He had tuned God out. And he saw his mistake and he turned his mind back on God and got his peace once again and came out of there preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. He had tuned in on God once again. So there wasn't anything wrong with the, the situation. He was in a bad situation in a communist prison. But he had tuned God out. And now he was tuning God back in. God said, I will keep him in perfect peace. I like that. Not just peace, but perfect peace. Whose mind is stayed on thee. And God and he remembered that verse. And God said, keep your mind on me. And he did. It's a strange thing. How generation after generation and church after church has tuned God out until the church is almost lost. Look at Europe today. It's one of the most heathen parts of the world. When they had the gospel so much into these countries, all up and down the, through Europe, uh, France and Germany and all these countries, where the gospel was so strong. And now uh, Jimmy Stewart, who was there, said there's more Christians in Africa per population than in Europe. And he said Europe is the most, one of the most needy mission fields in the world. Said you could go in cities in France of 40,000 people and not find a church of any kind. So, 
As Dr. Tozer was saying, what has happened to the gospel? You've seen it. It seems like after a while that the people that are here with the gospel finally tune it out until what God has to start and go someplace else and keeps moving. And uh, it looks like this is true in America. We're, we're the gospel is so much here in America. It's a sight. You can find churches every, almost every village and hamlet across our country. Television, radio, everything. Well, what's happening? The truth of the gospel has been turned out. As Dr. Tozer put it this way so beautifully, and that dear man had such a perception of truth. As he said, the first generation proclaims it, the second generation explains what their fathers taught, and the third generation apologizes for it. And that's been the history of church after church after church. The third generation has lost it. No wonder E. Stanley Jones says that, that the church has lost the kingdom. They've tuned God out, but still been religious. May God help us. We must turn our ears, to, tune, train our ears to hear God's voice or we'll lose it. We sit at the controls. It's up to us to keep tuned in on God's Word and what God says, to be the kind of Christians God wants us to be, but how marvelous it is when we can get tuned in on God. He'll bring us through every situation we face. I don't care what the situation is. If you'll tune in on God, he'll bring you through. Whatever it is. Thank God for that.